Hi, welcome to a second video from the development of a new Nixitube model. Uh, this new Nixitube will be called F and its main aspirations are good quality for a reasonable price. My name is Dalibor. For the past 12 years I was trying to bring Nixitube technology back from the extinction. In this video we will open the topic of manufacturing stems for the Nixitubes in-house. The stem serves two purposes. Uh, first of them is to mechanically hold the internal assembly, like all the assembly of the digits, and the anode grid sits on the stem and is spot welded to it. And it also provides electrical connections to the outer electronics. So whatever signal you send to the Nixie tube, it always goes through the stem. It's the only part where something goes through the glass. Uh, so it's absolutely critical to maintain good glass to metal seal here. We'll deal with this topic in another video. So for now we'll just focus on pressing the glass. So this stem consists of evacuation tube. So this is the tube where all the gases are evacuated from the tube. Uh, you can see the pins here, like the feet throughs that are sealed to the glass and these small pearls of the glass are called beads and they make the actual glass to metal seal longer and more reliable. They also provide mechanical support for this part of the wire. But why even to bother with manufacturing the stems if you can buy it from suppliers who are already tooled up and who can already manufacture them? Because we need to build our own machinery, our own tools to make them and that's not easy task. So the sure answer is that uh, I wasn't able to find a supplier who would be uh, willing to manufacture these for a reasonable price. Uh, that's the most important thing. The price ranged from some 7 euros to 20 euros for, for a stem and that's uh, very high that would make all the project of the F-tube uh, which aim is to uh, reach reasonable prices for the Nixie tubes, it would make it uh, unrealistic. Another reason was that uh, the suppliers that I in the end tried to develop the stems for us, uh, there were always some problems related to the development. So for instance, the first attempt was in 2016. It was a Chinese company. I first sourced off the shelf stem from them that they were making for another customer. This stem was absolutely perfect. The glass was clear, the pins were straight, the beads were uniform and all the seals had the same color. So very well made stem. Basically, I asked them to make exactly the same stem, just I send them different layout uh, of the pins that we need for our Nixie tube and uh, they made it. Unfortunately, I sent them simplified layout and uh, I omitted the beads because I didn't want to draw the beads uh, and they, they made the molds and everything without the beads. So that's, that, was, that was a shame, it was more my mistake and lesson learned, I need to provide more details to the suppliers. The Chinese company also didn't want to reveal what glass they use, what, what, what alloy for the pins they use, and this uh, asks for troubles in the future when a leakage appears, then we would not be able to investigate it because we, would, uh, we wouldn't know what, what kind of materials we are working with, we would be guessing. Uh, another attempt to make custom stem was uh, in 2017 and 18 with a Russian company uh, so we again paid uh, the molds and uh, they made few hundred stamps for us they were quite okay they were not as clean as the Chinese one the glass was full of bubbles but that would not be a problem they were tiny and would not would be basically just a visual problem but the pins were not as straight we would probably also be able to live with that if we straighten them uh, ourselves. Uh, but later Russia invaded Ukraine and so uh, we interrupted the contacts with the company. So in the end we ended up with these two attempts. So we paid around 10,000 euros for them together and we are without working stem. So uh, that gets me to another 
uh, reason. Uh, I want to have this under control. If we, it, I think it's better for us to invest into into the machinery and to develop the tools for making the stems ourselves, and to keep it under our control because the stem is critical part, you want to understand it, you want to have the materials and the quality under control. This is difficult, you need to, you know, when you outsource it, you need to trust the supplier that they their job work very well. Never mind, let's look at the process of making the stems itself. Uh, there are a couple of beautiful videos on YouTube showing the machines working in 1950s, uh, back in the days when the machines were most advanced. So we definitely want to study how the process was made. It consists of a circular glass pressing through which pass the metal pins which will be used later for the electrical connections. The bases are made on this type of machine, the pins being automatically fed from a hopper into the molding head. At the next position, a glass ring called a bead is fed from a hopper and placed round the pins. The head moves through a series of burners. The glass becomes softened and a toothed wheel presses it between the pins. At the first pressure, the glass is flattened. And at the second, the final shape is imparted to the base. Cleaning chambers now remove oxidation from the pins and the finished base is automatically transferred to a conveyor belt which carries it to an inspector. Beautiful machines, beautiful process and also very complicated. So we are definitely not going to build fully automatic carousels machines. These were designed for productions of hundreds of millions tubes per year. So this is definitely not our goal. So we will need to wisely decide uh, what will be the best form of a machine uh, for the production of 20,000 tubes per year. So far I have no experience with pressed glass, so I first need to get some feel for it. And what I'm going to do now is to make a small mold and use it on this lathe. So this is the idea, the mold will be divided into two halves. On the bottom part there will be a glass ring, uh, which will be heated by burner until the glass melts. And then we'll mesh it with this upper part which has a recession here that is formed in the shape of the stem. Uh, the glass will fill all the cavity and the excess glass will flow into these holes uh, creating the beads. On this wall we have a slight angle of 5 degrees, this is called draft angle which will help us to extract the glass from the, from the cavity. And this is the final shape of the glass that I hope for. One half of the mold will be mounted here in this chuck, another one will be mounted here. And the lathe allows us to spin with it as well as press it, like move this axis as well. We are lucky to have both lathes from the same brand because we can switch the, the chucks when we need. They are both old heatway lights from 1968. Good.
now we need to cut this raw glass to 17 millimeters long rings. We have six rings, so we have six attempts. The position of this machine is not best. We have these arches here. But we need to move it as close as possible to the wall so that we have some space around it. So we need to tune it a little bit. But this looks good. This looks good. There is a counterweight here and it's connected over a chain here and we used here this and it's broken so i need to put it back so this is the problem the locking mechanism here didn't survive the the weight of the counterbalance uh, counterweight so i need to put something else here So this is fixed, now another attempt. Oops. Oh yes, 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 yes. Wow, that looks so good. That's first first attempt, but it already looks very promising. I need to cool it down with the flame so that it doesn't crack. And we can look at it. That looks very good. So here is the result. I'm surprised because I wasn't expecting any result from this first test, but we have something that resembles the shape of the of the stem, so that's positive. What I especially like is the uniform shape of the beads. They are all the same, that's great. Also the overall shape is round and symmetrical, like it makes perfect circle. The thickness is uniform. I'm surprised how closely the glass follows the mold. It was machined roughly with rough surface and uh, I can see the machining marks on the glass. In the next attempt I will redesign the molds and we will do a couple of changes. So first we will add exhaust tube so that we have one piece of glass together with the exhaust tube. Uh, we will 
still work without the paints. I still don't want to work with the metal sealing here. I want to first test the, the, the glass pressing. Then we will try to make the glass fully fill the mold. Here I see round edges on the end, which means that the glass didn't flow to the corners of the mold. And finally, I want to try to improve the surface of the mold so that I achieve this beautiful bubble free and machining marks free surface like uh, they have on this stem. So that's for the next video. Thank you for your attention.